Hello. Shabbat shalom. Do you have any stories from the last year and a half? <laughs> Maybe one or two. I'm thinking about stories a lot, um, especially because I think the last year and a half, something, something interesting about our stories is uh, so many of them were disconnected from one another. Um, stories that maybe we were experiencing that we didn't take the time to, to share with other people. We didn't, we, didn't, um, we didn't have it within us, perhaps, to share with other people. And I, I know these stories, we're still, we're still racking them up um, in the experience of this, of this pandemic and this difficult time. But there are so many moments, so many experiences that we've had um, that maybe, maybe right now during Elul, as we, as we approach Rosh Hashanah, maybe right now is that time to really take some, take some opportunities to, to think about what those stories are. And I'm thinking about stories because at the beginning of our Parsha, Kitavo, we are going to read this really interesting uh, sort of ritual pageant that takes place when the Israelites finally arrive in the land of Israel. They're getting these instructions before they get there. Um, since they're taking place in Torah. But when they are finally arrive in the land of Israel and they have first fruits from their crops, they are supposed to bring those first fruits, those bikurim, to the temple, to the Beit HaMikdash. And they're, they're going to present them in a particular way and they have a basket and they give it to the Kohen and the, the priest who receives the basket in a particular way. And uh, the Talmud even tells us that along the way there were like parades and cheering and everybody was so excited for this thing to happen, this presentation of the Bikurim. And when they get there, something a little bit unexpected is supposed to happen. As we read in the beginning of our Parsha, when you get there, you shall recite this story. Arami Oveda Vi, Vayered Mitzrayma Vayagar Sham, and it continues, my father was a fugitive or a wandering Aramean. He went down to Egypt, it was small numbers. He, he grew prosperous, we were afflicted. It's a familiar story. And, and actually the words themselves might be familiar to you because they're words that we say on Pesach. They're part of our Pesach Haggadah, our story that we share that night, a night that is really focused so deeply and significantly on what it means to tell our story. So why is it that as they're standing here with their bikurim, with this celebratory offering, the first fruits, which everyone is so relieved and excited about, why are they telling this story in this way? We've talked about this a little bit over the years. Rabbi Braus shared many years ago a really fascinating study which showed a correlation between kids who knew their family's stories, who knew their history, the ups and the downs, and resilience and self-esteem. And I, I'd like to offer that that's not just about children, but it's about us as well. Now we've had a collective story, just like the person in this uh, ritual is sharing a collective story, but he's sharing it in the first person, right? My ancestor, right? Because he's taking on this collective story, this shared narrative, but he's really, thinking about, well, what's my experience? Because it keeps going and it says, and then God brought us to this place flowing with milk and honey. Now I bring the first fruits, first fruits which, which I have been given, right? Which God has given to me, right? So we're looking at this collective story and we're placing ourselves in it and we're recognizing where our own story is. And I don't think it's a coincidence that this happens as we're leading into Rosh Hashanah. This time that we're supposed to be taking some deep introspection, deep reflection, and thinking about the book of life, which instead of thinking about it as a forward-looking uh, writing and inscribing that God is doing for us, maybe we think about it sort of looking backwards a little bit, right? What is the book of our life to this point? And so I want to invite you, as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah and for Yom Kippur, as we take these, these opportunities of Elul to prepare ourselves in all kinds of ways, I want to I want to offer the challenge and the importance of telling your stories from particularly this past year and a half. These stories that maybe we haven't shared, and I say it's a challenge because it's not always easy to do. Tell the story of that joy, of the moment of coming together with someone you love, you hadn't been able to see for so many months, 
and also tell of the struggle of the disconnectedness of that time and maybe the sorrow that you felt in that moment because of all of that lost time. Tell about your relief when your child finally went back to school and also the, the emotions, the struggles of the time when they weren't in school and trying to juggle and balance whatever balance really means or meant. Tell of the moment that you got that vaccine, the moment of exhale, and also recognizing some of the fear, right, that you had been holding until that, until that moment. Let us tell our stories this year and let us listen. It's not always going to be easy, but it is essential to knowing who we are and what's been important to us and to connecting with one another. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.